Clueless Mendelbuzz didn't get the season 20 memo as this game is over. The opponent goes for the aerial ace bait, but no bait will be saving their fake golem looking to farm up to the double wild charges. You know the drill. The first wild charge will be forcing the opponent's final protect shield, and the second one will be knocking this very ever annoying vulture out of the sky. GG's and thanks for playing. Welcome back to the channel. Season 20 is here and I am hyped because we have so many buffs and so many Pokemon to take a look at. Today we're looking at three Pokemon that used to be zeros that are now heroes. All three of these Pokemon were ranked well outside of the top 100. To be fair, stuff like Marowak was ranked like 600th and out of nowhere it has become a hero in this new meta. For those of you that have been around the channel a while, you'll know I love some spice. So I invested an Elite TM into my Alolan Golem, giving it rollout. Is it any good? Well, you're going to have to watch the video to find out. Without any further ado, let's get into the battle. And in game one, we're going to lead the new and improved Jumpluff with its buff Fairy Wind into Annihilate. Clearly this opponent's still stuck in Season 19. Ape used to be the meta, now it's not. The opponent tries their luck, catching the Aerial Ace onto Turtonator. However, trainer, I'm not running that. I'm running that Hail Mary Acrobatics. We send out Marowak. Marowak forces the first Protect Shield with the Bone Club. The opponent invests that Protect Shield, looking to take back Switch, but I'm going to be like, nah, that's not happening. We're going to shield up, commit to the Mudslap farm down, and leave with Residual Energy, good to go. Out comes Skarmory. Skarmory going to be greeted with the Rockside. Rockside has been nerfed, but my god, is Marowak improved. Despite me opting for the Shadow variant, it's still reasonably bulky. The opponent looking for that Steel Wing farm down Marowak, able to reach the second rock side and almost delete two Pokemon in game number one. We send out Golem. Golem going to operate as the damage sponge. Don't worry, it's going to get some booms later. The opponent then pivots back out into Ape. I'm going to pivot back out into the John Bluff. John Bluff can tank any one move, especially a non-stab Night Slash. The opponent gets the boost, but despite the RNG God smiling upon my opponent, no boost is going to save them. We're going to fire off the next Energy Ball, despite me having the Acrobatics. Energy Ball nearly knocks out. One further Fairy Wind secures the knockout. Back out comes Skarmory. We're going to resist it. Fairy Wind farm down and take that game. In the next battle, we see the new variant of Mud Boys, a Mud Slapper in the form of Gastrodon. A very nice lead for us. The opponent looking to go for some chip action with the body slam, or at least so I thought. The opponent fires off the water pulse. Why? I have no ideas. This is the early ranks and essentially the Wild West. The opponent continues to stay and I fire off the energy ball that gets no respect. One shot and then vanquishing them back to their bogey ball. Out comes Skarmory. Instead of getting farmed down, I pivot out into Marowak and out comes Wiggles. Wiggles not going to appreciate the Bone Club. Bone Club used to be the worst move in existence, but now it's actually pretty good. Look at that damage. Marowak already at the second Bone Club, forcing the opponent's first Protect Shield. You can already see it coming. My newly built Golem is finally going to get his time to shine. I'm going to send out Jumpluff, throw one Fairy Wind and the Energy Ball. I'm going to go for the full Undercharge. Looking to get a little rollout head start. Energy Ball still secures the knockout, and Golem is now locked on into this Skarmory. We've got two protections. Am I going to respect the damage? Of course not. Sky Attack, double resisted. We're going to farm up to the double wild charges. You know the drill. The first one will be forcing the opponent's final protect shield, and the second one is going to be all she wrote with Golem picking up that one hit KO. GG's, and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we see Primeape in the lead. When I saw this thing, I was super hyped because this is a Pokemon I cannot wait to use myself. In the moment, I wasn't really paying attention. I thought they were on Legacy Karate Chop. They're actually on counter. If you're going to use Primeape this season, it's definitely worth an Elite TM. Counter users are old news. It's all about them Karate Choppers nowadays. We force a protection, then pivot into Marowak. We are on an ABB team. We are double weak to water and grass in the back. As the opponent stayed in, I go for the one shield. Mud slap farm down, anticipating the opponent doesn't have a counter, but then out comes Superior. We're going to fire off the rock side. Rock side has been nerfed, but you can still see it does some respectable damage. I intentionally don't throw here, looking to force some energy. I don't want the opponent to vine with farm me all the way down, because they've got access to Aerial Ace, and then that makes the Jump Bluff match up a lot worse if they've got a whole heap of energy. Aerial Ace, as the Germans say, is a move called Aerial Ace. It does pretty pitiful damage, we're outside of Aerial Ace range. The opponent actually allowed me to take him out with the acrobatics. Out comes Alolan Nine Towers, and here comes Gollum. Gollum going to be able to outpace to the double Rock Blast. The first Rock Blast should be forced in the Protect Shield. It looks like the opponent recognised the game's over, tank the damage, and we're going to move swiftly on to the next one. GG's to that opponent. 
In the next battle, again, we see Gashed on this opponent, opts to switch out, which is the player I would personally go for, as that is such a bad matchup for them. Out comes Channel Mascot, Drapion. The opponent fires off the Aquatel. We withstand the damage and return fire with the Bone Club. I did throw a suboptimal time in, but I've got no choice, as the opponent only takes four poison things to each Aquatel. We are going to match shields, commit to the Mud Slap farm down, keeping that super positive alignment. We even leave with a Bone Club for the road, which is going to do some very nice chip damage into Gastrodon. Gastrodon, a pretty bulky Pokemon, and again, the Bone Club buff is coming in clutch. So we managed to get him down below half health. To be fair, we didn't need to chip this thing whatsoever, as Energy Ball would be one-shotting him from full health. The opponent then sends out Gator. We're going to look to force the final Protect Shield with the Energy Ball. It looks like the opponent looked to call the Aerial Ace bait. Hashtag, we're not baiting, and we're going to move on to the next battle. GG's to that opponent. In the next battle, we see Metachan in the lead. Really, trainer, this is not season five. The opponent then say switches into public enemy number one, that stupid brick wall bastard on, and Marowak is going to have a very tasty little snack. We're going to commit to the full mud slap farm down and leave with so much energy. Out comes Azumarill, and we're just going to spam out a few bone clubs. The first bone club lands. Marowak says there's plenty more of where that came from, firing off the second bone club. We're even going to reach a third. And Azumarill has found itself already in the red unless the opponent wants to shield. The opponent unwilling to shield. They're going to commit to the full bubble farm down. And unfortunately, Gollum, I'm sorry, buddy. Again, you're going to operate as a damage sponge. If the opponent full send a Hydro Pump, I have zero doubt on my mind that will one-shot us. The opponent fire off the Ice Beam. I then anticipated the swaps. We pivot back out into Jump Bluff and out comes Metacham. We fire off the Energy Ball, forcing a Protect Shield. I guess I should respect the Ice Punch. I was actually thinking, I don't want to get Power Up Punch baited, and I get baited with a pop. Fantastic. However, for this trainer that's clearly stuck in the past, this team was meta like two or three years ago. No amount of baiting is going to save them. Would you look at that? The opponent goes for one further Power Up Punch bait. The no amount of Master baiting is going to save this trainer who's clearly stuck in the past. Energy Ball picks up the knockout, and we're going to take that game. In the next battle, we see some Shadow and Shadow Crime very much in our favour. The opponent say switch into Drapion, and here comes Marowak. Marowak can tank any one move. Aquatel does a very solid amount of chip damage. However, nowhere near as much as this Bone Club will do. Bone Club secures the knockout. Clearly, Jamie Finn, 1415 is the algorithm confirmed. As long as the opponent doesn't have something, the hard punishes our Golem. And that is a certain no. As the opponent sends out Drift Blim, we fire off the rock side, forcing a protect shield. We're going to send out Golem. Golem again, going to operate as a damage sponge. If this move doesn't knock me out, I'm going to instantly pivot into Jump Bluff, anticipating the opponent looking to snipe, and that's exactly what they do. Out comes Machamp, Machamp, between a rock and a hard place, quite literally. We fire off the energy ball, which goes unshielded back out. Comes the hot air balloon. Gollum's incredibly low, so Jump Bluff is going to have to put in some work here. We should look at the icy wind. The opponent lowers my attack. We're not running aerial ace, we're running acrobatics. Acrobatics goes unshielded, nearly knocks out. We manage to fairy wind farm down and take that game. In the next battle, we see another one of the buff Poison Sting users, Quillfish, or as Rise to the Occasion calls it, Quill God, a Pokemon I actually used after this, and it was so much fun. We tank the Aqua Tower Return Fire with the Bone Club. I'm very grateful the opponent just let that go, as Quillfish would have been a problem for me. Out comes the bulky Vulture Mandibuzz. The opponent going to be unable to snarl, far me down before we reach the Rock Side, Rock Side. Will hit for super effective, but won't do too much damage. The opponent opt to give me a protect shield and then even throw energy, which is fantastic. Of course, we're never shielding Marowak at such low health. One of the most exciting changes this season is the 50 second switch time. You can see I'm waiting out my full clock, anticipating still being switch lock. My switch time has actually elapsed. The opponent pivots out into Wigglytuff and we send back out John Pluff. I'll be honest, I have no idea why the opponent is staying in. Perhaps they don't know Gollum's moveset. If they don't know, they'll soon find out. I've got no intentions of shielding Jump Bluff. The opponent actually fire off the Swift, which doesn't knock out as Jump Bluff is very, very bulky. I'm going to go for the Energy Ball, go for a full Undercharge. We then get the Fairy Wind farm down. If the opponent looks for that Snarl farm down, we'll even reach an Acrobatics. The opponent smartly throws. Trainer, if you want that work, my god, is Gollum about to give it to you? Back out. Comes Alolan Golem. I have two shields, but this smells like an Aerial Ace bait, and it is. We're now going to farm up to the double Wild Charges, and I'm sure you already know how this one's going to end. 
The opponent again go for an aerial ace bait, but no bait will be saving their fate. The first wild charge forces the protect shield, and the second one is going to be all she wrote with Gollum picking up yet another KO. GG's and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we see public enemy number one in the lead. I think I should have actually pivoted into Gollum, but I'll be honest, it's got a very vulnerable typing and I'm actually opting to send out my hard counter, which is probably a bad decision. But to be honest, my team building was pretty poor here. I just picked three buff Pokemon to hope for the best. However, it is the early ranks and it doesn't really matter to be honest if we win, lose or draw. So we're just going to rock with it. We actually managed to take back switch, which is very nice for us. The opponent then sends out superior. If you look to the right now, you can see my switch timer just popped up. So what would have been a better play than what I'm doing is pivoting out, saving Marowak, sending back out John Bluff, baiting back out Bastidon and potentially could have won this game. However, I didn't do that. I'm playing like a potato, so do as I say and not as I do. Of course, I've never used Gollum in the Great League. I just built it. So potentially I was thinking at the time of playing it, perhaps I can knock it out of a wild charge. The opponent fires off the aerial ace, which of course I'm never shielding. We can tank too. You can see aerial ace is such a shit move. Out comes Bastion on. I'm going to fire off the energy ball, praying for a defense drop. It's only a 10% chance. Do we get it? Of course we don't. I'm now forced to pivot. Again, I think I make a mistake here, shielding this move. Bastion hits like a wet noodle. We can tank any one move, not particularly well. However, we can tank one. I think I should have just tanked the first and farm up as much energy as I physically can, as in theory I'm going to need three wild charges to knock this thing out. You can see I successfully baited this. We then land the wild charge, which isn't lethal, and with a lowered defence, quite literally anything's going to knock out the glassy golem. I generally think that's one of the worst battles I've played in forever, but it is what it is. We're going to leave it in, just to show that we all play like shit sometimes. Well, actually, I personally play like shit quite a lot of the time, but it is what it is. Moving on to the next one. Clodsire certainly isn't something Jumpluff wants to see, but Gollum is absolutely walled by it. So if you're in a situation like this, you literally have no choice but to sack your lead. I am quite fortunate this opponent's actually running Mudshot as opposed to Poison Sting. Clodsire is ranked number one on PB Poke currently because of the Poison Sting buff. If it was on Mudshot, it'd be ranked a lot, lot lower. We managed to make good of a poor situation obtaining Shield Advantage. We send out Marowak. The opponent tries to catch a Bone Club onto Jump Bluff and I'll respond with Gollum. Gollum will be getting one shot by the energy ball, so I am going to have to respect the damage. I am going to return fire with the Rock Blast. Rock Blast, not a particularly good move. However, if you go for the Stone Edge move, you're quite slow. So I have opted for the cheaper Rock Blast. The opponent invests that Protect Shield. I am now forced to go all shields down, as I don't think they're quite in Rock Side range from my Marowak. Then heavily over farm before firing off the Rock Blast. Rock Blast from this range does secure the knockout and we are anticipating the opponent trying to snipe me. So I send back out Marowak, saving Gollum for whatever's in the back. I think that was a nice example of the 50 second timer, meaning I was able to pivot back out and bank the energy for the end game. Out comes Gastrodon. We fire off the first Bone Club. We're able to reach the second, which will put them into a range where Gollum can actually counter this thing despite being completely walled. We're actually walled by the remainder of the opponent's team, but Gollum gonna have enough in the tank to get the job done, and the opponent is gonna concede the match before I very rudely throw the BM wild charge. GG's. In the next battle, we see a non-shadow victory bell. Most people who run Vic do opt for the shadow variant. However, this opponent going for the regular. Why? I have no idea. We send out Gollum to answer this Alteria. The opponent tanks the Rock Blast and we are also going to match shoot, tanking the Sky Attack. This is going to be a very nice example of how the rollout buff helps you farm stuff down as we're able to get the full rollout farm down and even leave with a charge move. I did anticipate this going unshielded. However, the opponent opt to shield. I'm not entirely sure why, because even if I was on Aerial Ace, it would do objectively more than a Rock Blast. We send back out Jump Bluff, fire off the Acrobatics, looking to pick up that one hit KO. The opponent banks some energy, send out Bastion, and Bastion is about to get that full Smackdown beatdown. Well, not Smackdown, they're using Smackdown, but we're going to smack them into oblivion with the Mud Slaps. I think fully farming down Bastion from full health was probably the highlight of my day today. I hate Bastion, and my god, does Marowak eat it alive. Victory Bell fires off the Leaf Blade, removing Marowak from the field of play, but John Bluff has its back. We fire off the Acrobatics, which would probably kill Victory Bell and all its relatives, and we're going to emerge victorious. In the next battle, we see John Bluff into Machamp. The opponent say switches into Clod Sire, and Marowak finally gets aligned against PvPoke's number one ranked pick. 
earthquake land, some heavy neutral damage, however, we're never in danger of getting poison stung farm down. I heavily over farm before firing off the bone grub, the opponent looking to realign, however, that simply is not happening. Marowak able to outpace to the next bone grub. The opponent lose switch and the downer protect shield. Out comes Gator. We're going to fire off the bone club, bone club, shadow and shadow crime. I'm going to lose some very solid chip damage. Switch time pops up and I send out John Bluff. The lose con would be tanking a nice beam to the face. So I do respect it and the opponent full sends. My gosh, I'm glad I didn't try and shield flex. I believe this is only six. It's seven and seven to the ice beam. We've got so much residual energy. I'm just going to shield whatever they throw. Out comes Machamp, we're almost doubled up on charge moves. We don't even need to throw an Acrobatics, it's Energy Ball will knock out the Glassy Machamp. However, that being said, we do outpace the Acrobatics after the opponent shielded the Energy Ball. We may as well throw it, because the animation looks pretty cool. GG's. In the next battle, we see the Jumpluff Mirror. Let's see if this opponent's also a man of culture, rocking that Legacy Acrobatics. Clearly they're not as a thrown after only five Fairy Wins, so they're an Aerial Ace user. Come on, trainer, use the nuke. Aerial Ace doesn't do too much damage, but my god, Acrobatics is going to clap. The opponent near gets one shot. We can very comfortably tank one further Aerial Ace and outpace to the Acrobatics. So Acrobatics is the way to go in the Zero Shield. It beats the Aerial Ace variant. The opponent give up that Protect Shield, and I'm happy with Jumpluff's contribution. We're going to send up Gollum and look for the rollout farm down. Can we get it? Gollum able to get the perfect farm down. A very nice run in start. Out comes Gastrodon. I do YOLO the wild charge, which is a bit of a mistake in fairness. I wanted to see how much it does, but with that lowered defense, that mod slap now does so much damage. Marak with a two to one shield advantage, tasked with doing the heavy lifting in this battle. The opponent luckily has done sparse in the back, as offering quite literally zero fast move pressure, as ground does resist rock. I think I should probably shield both Jorons, as Joron will hit harder than a body slam. However, I'm gonna tank one. I'm then going to over farm before knocking them out with the bone club. We do need to make back to back moves against that Gastrodon. I am running out of HP. Back out comes Gastrodon. We are now doubled up. We are going to need to survive one further mud slap to get the move off. Marowak is in the red, but his bulk has been very, very good throughout this video. Does Marowak let me down? It does not. We're able to survive the mud slap, reach the bone club. Bone club actually isn't lethal. But we're going to be able to mud slap farm down afterwards and take that game. In the next battle, we see a Gastron lead with a Drapion say switch. I think we've seen this like three times in today's video. I actually saw it a further two times, but didn't put it in. Where the hell did this team come from? Have people already put YouTube content out with it? However, if you see that team a lot, clearly this team hard count as that. Although I highly doubt anyone's going to watch this video and think this team looks like one that I'm going to run. It's fun. Would I recommend it? Probably not. I think Gollum's probably the weak link as there's so many things it needs to avoid. Although it really isn't too bad in neutral situations like this. Where we're hitting the neutral and we've got shields to hide behind and the opponent's got very little fast move pressure into us. I have got two shields, which I should start using. However, we are going to survive one brutal swing. The opponent already at the next. This thing is so incredibly spammy, only taking four fairy wins to each this season. I think Chi Weezy will really come into its own in the Ultra League. I think that's where it will shine best. The opponent tank the Rock Blast and go for a very nice snipe with Gastrion, and suddenly this game has got a little dicey. As the opponent still has a protect shield to hide behind, I think what I'm going to look to do is try and fairy wind farm this thing down. Fairy wind got a buff this season, so let's hope that's possible. You can see these fairy winds aren't doing much, but it does look like it's possible, as long as we can survive two further body slams. Luckily for me, the mud slaps are quite literally doing nothing. You can see they're mud slapping away, and my health is hardly moving. The timer will be popping back up. The opponent pivots back out into G Weezy. I'm very close to the double move. I am going to shield up the Brutal Swing, return fire with the first energy ball. This should be forced in the Protect Shield. The opponent actually choose to put their hopes and dreams into Gastrodon. We're able to survive the Mud Slaps, Fairy Wind Farm down and take that game. In the next battle, we see Clodsar in the lead. This one is on the correct move of Poison's thing, which is pretty bad for us. Like the last time we saw Clodsar, we're just going to sack our lead and try and keep this thing as far away from Gollum as possible. You can see the opponent actually offering quite a bit of fast move pressure. They could actually sting us down if they wished from here. However, that's okay. The main thing is this thing is far away from my golem that does not fancy the work of this bulky pest clod sire. 
The opponent doesn't commit to this thing farm down, which is advantageous for me, as I can now mod that farm down and not have to tank an earthquake to the face. We've also got a very nice running start. For whatever comes out, out comes Gator. So we throw the correct three mod slaps and the Bone Club, only giving away one free turn. Bone Club forces the protection, and I'm happy to match, as of course Gollum doesn't fancy this threat either. At the time of this battle, I thought they've got two things that are really good into Gollum, so surely Gollum's good against whatever's in the back, although that's pretty optimistic. Who the hell builds a team thinking, oh, I need to make sure I've bought my Gollum counters? But I've already decided we're going to put it all on Gollum, and oh boy, was that a mistake. It's out comes the champ, and I'm very quickly going to concede the match and say you've got me. So that is going to wrap things up for the first upload of Season 20. I'd like to apologise for the poor audio. This was recorded in my car after a 12 hour night shift. I didn't want to wake the kids up. I wanted to get some content out there. However, don't worry, future videos will have better audio when I've stopped working, which will be probably Wednesday or Thursday. I've got one more night shift to go. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new. Consider subscribing if you like your battle speech on my channel. A link to a battle speech form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.